Greetings, Saints, Prophetess Dawn O'Brien, Servant of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Corner here. You know, I started speaking just a little while ago, and then all of a sudden the computer just shut off. So we've got to do it again. It's going to start raining here in Florida. In fact, it was raining yesterday. My girlfriend came and got me for my birthday, and she took me out. You know, she's that, that my bestest girlfriend. Mama Paige and her husband, Papa Nick, you know, she always thinks of me and my husband. You know, she comes over and she um, takes me out and brought us gifts for, for Christmas. You know, <laughs> she, we're like her kids, you know, and she's getting ready to go to Alabama because that's where her family lives. And um, she's so precious. She's like an angel. And she's always looking out for Daniel and I. Um, but so I was saying it's raining now. You know, I was planning on doing a word uh, this morning, actually, but I haven't been sleeping good. Um, the past few nights I've been waking up. I don't know if it's because I've been putting these rollers in my hair and I've been sleeping on, but um, I've been waking up like three in the, um, two o'clock, I should say, in the morning. And then I can't go back to sleep. I sleep like three hours right now. I'm like wide awake. Well, I plan on speaking, um, just putting up this word uh, for my birthday and wishing y'all a Merry Christmas um, because I don't know if I'm going to be on between now and after Christmas. Um, so I'm going to share that with you in a minute. But the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about 2019. He was talking to me and for all of us. Um, and a lot of it, some of it I've shared in 2018, which I thought we were going to see some changes uh, this year, which we have, um, but we're almost at the end of the year, saying so. I'm telling you, we're getting ready to go into a new scene, new season with new changes for all of us. You know, I was talking to my girlfriend about that yesterday. You know, because she does with um, cheerleading, and she she's thinking about not doing that this next year. Um, her daughter may be getting married, but she wants to be doing what God wants her doing, too, because, you know, God, I believe, is going to open doors for her and and for for you and for me in these last days. We're going to see God do a lot of changes in the coming days, I believe. Let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you for this day. We give you praise, Lord. I ask you to wash us and cleanse us in your blood, Father. We come against all distractions. Lord, I pray this computer stays on. We don't have a problem, Lord. Um, it's about to rain, Lord. Um, I just pray right now that this word will go forth, Lord, that I'll get to speak to your people, Lord, and that those that you want tuned in will listen and hear, Lord. We thank you, Father. We give you praise, Father. Help us to be ready for what is coming ahead of us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, we have to stay focused. We can't get so busy. You know, I know everybody's eyes are on this Christmas holiday. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, I've told the Lord this. Daniel and I are just waiting for our deliverance. We're not into all this worldly things. And um, I, I want what God wants. And I know there are those that, that want that as well. You know, you're waiting on God, too, to open doors for you. And he is. I really truly believe we're almost in that next season that's about to take place. Let me just share this um, letter with you that I'm going to place up here as well because I've already made a video on it. I said, have a safe and blessed weekend. You know, because today is Friday the 21st. I want to post this today. And Dan, I say, Merry Christmas to everyone in case I don't post anything until after Christmas. You know, because tomorrow I'll be gone. Tomorrow is actually my birthday. I'm going to be 47 saying, so, oh gosh, here we go, another year. You know, but I thank God for everything. He is so good to me. And I'm just going to read this to you. Remember, I spoke this prophetic word recently. Study to show yourself approved before God. At 2.02 p.m., I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, study thyself to show yourself approved before God. You're only going to get out of the Bible what you put in. If you are expecting others to do all the work for you in these last days, you'll be lost, I heard the Holy Spirit say. If you're not reading and studying your Bible yourself, you're going to put yourself in harm's way. And that means dangerous situation and could die. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, the Bible says. You cannot expect others to do all the work you should have been doing all along. Have you walked away from God? Have you? I'm, I'm asking a question. Have you walked away from God? 
Now is your time to come back to the Lord and start following Him and obeying the Lord. And that goes for all of us, saints. You know, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. God needs more of us. All right. God will begin to pick up the pieces in your life where you left off. Just repent to God and ask for forgiveness. As far as the east is from the west, God is forgiving you. And maybe you have walked away. You know, and now is your time to come back. Just go to God, wherever you're at, and just say, God, forgive me. I've turned away from you. I want to come back. I want to start following you. I want to start doing what I'm supposed to do. Put the pieces back in my life. Put me back where I need to be. I ask that right now in Jesus' name. Just pray that prayer. God hears you. You know, he, he loves all of us. We're, we're, we're all imperfect. None of us are there yet. I'm going to tell you right now, we're changing from glory to glory. And I said, please, friends, be safe wherever you go and whatever you do. We must keep our eyes on Jesus. Our world is getting very unsafe. That goes for me and all of us. I know God is getting ready to move very soon. Will it be the end of 2018 or in the beginning of 2019? This is a new season for all of us, and there will be many changes. And here's a prayer. I said, help us, Lord Jesus, to embrace and be pliable, I pray. Let's stay alert and watch. The earthquakes are getting bigger all over the globe. The West Coast has had small swarms and volcanoes are popping up too. This is all happening in the ring of fire with earthquakes in Yellowstone, Nevada, Montana, Utah, and Idaho. Now we're also seeing Hawaii. Hawaii is getting earthquakes and volcanoes. Yellowstone National Park Steamboat Geyser, remember I told you earlier, has erupted 30 times in 2018. 2018 is now officially a record year for Yellowstone National Park Steamboat Geyser. It has just erupted for the third time this year on December 8, 2018, beating the record for the most eruptions in one year from 1964. Now we're seeing them in Tennessee. Yes, we've heard that, and they're, they're being felt over in Georgia and Missouri. Don't forget Oklahoma and Texas. And remember, I talked about Beyond San Andreas, there's five scariest fault lines in the U.S. And I put the link up there for you so you can look at it. And we've talked about this. The global debt has reached a record high of $184 trillion. Also, don't forget the Federal Reserve on Wednesday this past week hiked the nation's benchmark borrowing rate by 0.25% for the fourth time this year. Despite months of objections from President Donald Trump, who fears higher interest rates will take the steam out of the nation's booming economy. Also, don't forget, President Donald Trump is waiting for the Senate to approve the spending bill that includes funding the wall. Will they approve of it, or are they going to shut down the government? Let's watch and see. We don't know. we got to wait and see what's going to happen. I believe maybe they're pushing for the wall, and I, I do. I do believe that. I said that. Even more so now because of a great big earthquake that is coming to that area, I believe, over in the West Coast, over there in the Mexico area. We don't want more chaos in America, okay? So we've got to keep America safe. It's important we get in our closets and stay near Jesus. I, I believe the times are changing more quickly. And I said, Holy Father, keep all of your children safe. I pray in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, then I posted this. I said, tomorrow is my birthday. I'm another year older, 47 years. And I don't feel bad about telling my age because all glory goes to Jesus. And that's right. We need to give God all the glory. He has given me abundance, grace, and strength to do all things. God is so amazing. The time keeps flying. We're not getting any younger. Hopefully wiser in the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another day. I have to live, breathe, and celebrate all your love, mercy, and goodness towards me. You are a faithful, merciful, and loving God to all generations. What would we do, Lord, without you? You mean everything to me. I love you so, dear Lord. God, it's the very breath that you and I breathe, the reason we live, move, and have our being. That's right. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. Jesus is the reason you and I can do anything at all. And that's right. We can't do anything. Apart from Christ, we can do nothing. And I said, I love you, my sweet Lord, the great I am. Now, I want to say happy birthday to all the December babies, you know, that were born in December. I want to read you this poem. I wrote, got a poem uh, for my birthday. This was back in 2013, so I'm going to read it to you. My birthday 
Um, I, I called it December 22nd. Today I want to offer my love to you and say thank you precious Lord for all you do. With each passing day that comes I love you more and more in greater sums. December 22nd is the day of my birth. You knew me in my mother's belly when I would arrive to planet earth. Before I was born mom lost two babies in her womb. But you had plans for me that did not include a tomb. You have called me to be a watchman these final days. Warn others to turn from their wicked ways. Soon Jesus will be here to wipe away every tear. Calm the raging storms and quiet your fears. Be not discouraged, tired, lay down and sit. Think it's all over, mope and quit. Come, Lord Jesus, your children await, not giving up or becoming faint. Keep your head up high and looking to the sky. One day your sweet Savior will appear, and that day will finally be here. We are victors in the power of Christ's name. Overcome any obstacle and boldly proclaim. Jesus came to save the lost, deliver those in prison, and heal the lame. Uh, Psalm 139, 13. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Now, I want to say, which I've said this, we're, we're almost at the end of 2018. If uh, you feel led to help our ministry or you want to send anything, you know, to us, you know, uh, we do have three partners and we, we are very thankful for those that have partnered with our ministry and have stuck by our side. If you would like to help us, you know, because at the end of the year, you know, you can write it off on your taxes. We are a 501c3 tax deductible ministry and if you'll let us know, we can write you out a receipt. You know, if you have a large donation, you can send it. Why not? Give it to those that are doing work for the Lord. Don't give it to the government. I'm going to tell you right now. They don't need your money. Give it to those that are doing a work for the Lord. You can give a gift through the PayPal donation at heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. And that's the same place you can send emails if you have a prayer need or a word of encouragement. You can put it there on YouTube, Facebook. You can also send it in the mail, Don's Heartfelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida 32716. And I'll list all that down there for you. Um, but again, I want to say thank you for those that have partnered and have given gifts into our ministry. You know, we appreciate you. You want to be helping those that you see that God is using. Don't give your money out to these false preachers because there's a lot of them out there. There are um, those that are sitting in these churches that are, um, what do you call it, Sh wolves in sheep's clothing. So you don't want to be helping them out. You want to help out the true, uh, those that are speaking the true word of God that God is ministering into your lives. All right, and that's all I'm going to say. I'll put all that on there for you. But I want to share this um, small word from Marsha Burns and Prophet Russ. Uh, Marsha Burns said this, Go beyond yourself to carry out my will. Be my representative, speak and act as an extension of me, says the Lord. Be a blessing to others in thought, words, and deeds. This is a way for others to have a desire to know me and to see my heart through you. I seek to use those who are obedient to do all that I ask. Romans 13, 8, Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. And I love this word by Prophet Russ. I want to share this with you. The Father says today, No more shall tears be your bread day and night. Oh, man, that ministers to me. You know, I've cried a lot. You know, I'm like a weeping Jeremiah. My dad always says, because I'm very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He goes on to say, I'm wiping away by the hand of my sovereignty the tears of frustration and mourning that have streaked your face. Thank you, Jesus. I'm surrounding you with the comfort of my spirit and satisfying you with the deep refreshing that only comes from the hidden and secret places of my habitation. I say to you, let go of and relinquish those things that don't make sense to you of the past. Amen. You wondered and you asked and no one had any answers that could satisfy the raging controversies in your heart. What is that to you and me, says God? Am I not better to you than ten answers to your most plaguing, plaguing questions? Come out of the house of sadness and know that rejoicing lies just ahead. You may not feel like dancing, but at least take some dancing lessons, says God. I love that. You have no idea just how radically I'm about to turn things around. Amen. You may not feel like singing, but just acknowledge that you do have a voice and can make a noise that pleases me. 
even if it doesn't please anyone else. You may not feel like you have a testimony yet, but why don't you go ahead and write it down in advance and just wait and see how I bring it to pass in radical measure to change circumstances and make all that garbage you've gone through nothing more than a footnote of my greater faithfulness in your life. Amen. Well, Lord, we just received that. We're waiting for you to, to open doors. Thank you, Prophet Russ, for that word. All right, I'm going to share this word with you because this is a word that God was speaking to me this morning, and he also is speaking to you. I told you before, God will speak into my life certain things, but it's not just for me, saints. It's for all of us. He, he's going to be doing changes in all of our lives. I really truly believe that. So we need to press in to the Lord and, and what God is saying. So I call this word, children, are you ready for 2019? All right, on December 21st, which is today at 5.20 a.m., I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, a new day is about to dawn upon you, daughter. I heard him say that. Are you ready? This new year will be exciting and challenging, I heard the Lord say. Miracles, miracles, miracles. I see coming forth. I, the Lord, will perform miracles you have yet to see, my daughter. These will be the greater miracles, children, you have waited to see. So he was talking to you and to me. He was talking to all of us. John 14, 12. For very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. I'm getting ready to discipline the body of Christ, which we've talked about several times. I, King Jesus, am returning for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Time of testing is at hand. We've read this before. I'm going to read it again. Hebrews 12, 3 through 11, the discipline of God. For consider him who endured such hostility, hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Verse 4, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chasing of the Lord nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Verse 6, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Aren't you glad I am? I'm glad God disciplines me. No, it doesn't feel good. You know, when we were younger, our parents disciplined us and didn't feel right, but they were disciplined us for our good. And that's what it goes on to say in verse 7, If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? Okay, verse 8, but if you are without chasing of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Illegitimate. Furthermore, in verse 9, we have, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Should we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and land? And that's so true. Should we give Jesus respect? Verse 10, for they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Verse 11, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness, after it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. And it's so true, you know, as we uh, stay pliable and let God do the work that he wants to do with each of us, it becomes easier, saints. I don't know how, how it really does. When you cooperate with the Holy Spirit and you let God have his way in your life, but if, if you're fighting against the Lord, it's going to be hard. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be very hard in these last days for you. If you're fighting against the Lord, you no, know, we have got to yield to the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I pray that for all of us, Lord including myself, that we will just yield ourselves to you, Lord. Even if it's not what we want, Lord, may we just yield to you and just say, yes, Lord, we will do what you're saying, whether we understand it, we like it, it feels good or not, Lord, but you see things we don't see. And Lord, you bless those that are obedient, Lord. So help each of us to obey you, Lord, no matter what, to be obedient in Jesus' name. He said, I'll purify my bride and shake everything that cannot be shaken. We've talked about this before. Hebrews 12, 25 through 29. Hear the heavenly voice. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape, who refused him who speaks on earth. 
much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he is promising yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Verse 27, now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. See, so God is going to shake everything that cannot be shaken. And what's of him will remain, and what's not of him is going to go. Saints, so he's going to shake it all up. All right, verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. He said this to me, my bride will be made strong, I heard him say. They will handle the adverse circumstances that are coming. They have not been dependent on me for anything. All that is about to change in 2019. All right, it's getting ready to change. 2019 will be very challenging for many of my children if they will not call upon me in their day of trouble. See, if we refuse to go to God in our time of need, and we say, well, we're going to do it ourselves. Well, God will step back. He will let you. And that goes for the world. If they do not want to turn to Christ and give them their heart and life, they're going to have problems. But, you know, when we yield to the Lord, it gets easier. And he helps us. I, I mean, I don't even know how I could do any of this without the Lord. He is my strength my help, my hope. He's the reason I get up in the morning. He's your reason. He's what's going to be all of our reasons. I'm going to just tell you that right now. Because we're seeing the world, it's changing quickly. Things are happening all around us. And it's not time for us to get worried or fearful. Fearful, but know that God is in control and he'll protect you and me and keep us safe if we're listening to the Lord and we're obeying the Lord, not just going wherever we feel like, going here, going there, because if we don't listen, we're going to wind up in harm's way, like I said earlier, in dangerous situations where we could end up dying if we're not careful. All right. Uh, he gave me Psalm 50, 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. He said, this will be the turn of the century that everyone has been waiting for. No, I'm not saying it's the end of civilization. Now, I'm going to say it again because I know there are people thinking, well, it's the end of the world. We're going home. No, I know there's a lot of them. They're saying, we're leaving. Things are about to happen. We're getting ready to see um, Russia and China attack. Yeah. I don't know how soon that's going to be. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I do know we're getting ready to see some changes. But like I've told you before, every time I think God's about to do something, he takes a little longer. Okay? He puts precept upon precept. God is in no hurry. I'm going to tell you that right now. He wants you and I to wait because i got a feeling we're going to have to wait for the return of Christ. Remember he said in the Bible, it says to pray that you're worthy to escape all that's getting ready to come upon the world. You know, and he said you're going to hear roar, you're going to hear rumors of wars, wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquakes, and a famine. Remember that picture I showed of President Donald Trump with the floodwaters coming in and then they came away and remember that dream that I read to you that, um, that when they were leaving batting practice, there was a great earthquake. And then at the bottom, President Donald Trump said, you've got to keep praying for me. So, you know, are we getting ready to see something? I don't know how soon it's going to be. Now, if you remember, Joseph came and told the king there was going to be a famine. So, I don't know. I've sent letters to President Donald Trump and to the Trump administration and to emails on here warning them what's coming. I know scientists... General Case I've spoken with has given warnings. You know, and I know there's other prophetic servants that have given warnings. So we need to pray that President Donald Trump and the Trump administration would have an encounter with God and that they would realize that we're going to see changes, that we need to humble ourselves and we need to pray and we need to get back to God. I believe um, times are changing and it's going to be like that, like the old days. Okay, remember how the prophets came to the kings. I believe God's made me a prophetic servant. I believe I'm going to speak a word to President Donald Trump. Now, I don't know when that's going to happen, but the Lord has shown me. You know, I know people say, oh, well, that's not going to happen. Well, you know what? I believe it is. Okay. I believe the impossible. Yes, it looks impossible, but you know something? 
I have faith. What's faith? Faith is something things hope for, but yet not seen. God can do anything. There is nothing too hard for God. So you and I have got to have faith, and we've got to believe. If God has put a vision in your heart, I told you, hold on to that vision. Don't give that vision up. Have a cup of two. One, two, throw the vision chair. Wait for it. It'll surely come. Remember, I did a word. There are babies being born in the spirit. God is getting ready to birth babies in the spirit. Okay, we're not talking about having a regular baby. I'm talking about babies being born in the spirit. That's right. This is not a nine-month pregnancy. No, this has been, oh my God, it's been over 25 years. But it's about to come forth. Hallelujah. Your baby is about to come forth. Give Jesus praise. Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you in, in advance, Lord, that you're getting ready to open doors, Lord. And we're going to dance and we're going to sing and we're going to praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Prophet Russ. All right. Let's go back to this. So I was saying, this is not... This is a turn of a center, but it's not the end of civilization. No, what I'm saying, hard days are ahead of you, my children. Okay, I'm not going to give you steak and potatoes. No, I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. I'm not going to give you soothing and messages that are going to tickle your ears. No, I'm going to tell you the truth. I know people are saying, oh, everything's going to get better. God bless America. You know, President Donald Trump, you're doing a wonderful job. Yes, you're helping our economy, but we've got to stay humble. We've got to stay humble before the Lord. You know, and I'm going to tell you right now, we've got to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves in these last days because we're dealing with people out there that have demonic spirits. I'm going to tell you right now. We're talking about even those in other countries. We can't trust no one. We can't trust Russia. We can't trust China. Can't trust North Korea, Iran. I don't trust any of them. I'm going to tell you, the only one I trust is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the only one that you can trust. All right? We can't be praying to all these false gods like they did in the old days. They prayed to Baal. No, we got to pray to Jesus. I know people say, oh, no, no, no. We got to have all these other gods. Well, those are dead gods. They're not going to answer your prayer. All right? we got to pray to Jesus because only Jesus is going to help us. What about all the weather patterns, all the things that we're seeing happen, the dead fish, the dead birds, the weather patterns, the, I mean, all this stuff that's going on, the, the poison in the water, this is not a climate change, all right? This is judgment. That's right. God is getting ready to judge America, and we better wake up. It's time God's people wake up. It's time the world wake up. We're sleeping. I'm just going to tell you right now, God's getting ready to shake the boat. All right? He's going to shake it up. Remember, they were sleeping in the boat. It shook. God's getting ready to shake the boat. He's getting ready to shake America. You better be grounded on the solid right Christ Jesus. So when the floodwaters come in, you're going to stand up strong and mighty and powerful in the Lord. Without Christ, you ain't going to do anything. I'm going to tell you right now. Without the Lord, you're not going to be able to do anything. But with Christ, we can do all things. Because the greater one, King Jesus, lives in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. It's not because of us, Lord. We, it's because of you. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Definition of turn of century, the time when a particular century ends and another begins. Yes, we're getting ready to go into a new millennium. All right? Everything will not just be handed to you. You will have to pray, seek, knock, and yes, even wait. I know we don't want to talk about that. We hate waiting. Oh, God, I hate waiting. You think after 20-something years I'd be patient? No, I'm not patient. And maybe my head injury causes it. There'll be times we'll be standing in the line at the grocery store. I don't want to wait. <laughs> but, you know, God wants us to learn to wait with a good attitude. Lord, help all of us. No, I'm not there yet, and I'm not going to profess I'm there yet, all right? I know I'm not perfect, all right? I feel like i got to live up to perfection. I said, God, I can't be perfect. Everyone's watching me, Lord. They're going to be watching me. So God, I ask you to help me because I'm not perfect. I am imperfect. I'm going to let you know right now, I am imperfect, and I may mess up, say the wrong thing. I may do the wrong thing. Pray for me. Don't gossip about me. Don't talk about me. Pray for me. That's what I'm asking you to do. And that's what you need to do for those leaders over you. You know, we gossip about them. We talk about them. But we don't realize what it took for them to get where they're at. 
okay? And the Lord has shown me that more and more now. You know, we're, it's so easy for us to gossip and talk about them, but are we willing to pay the price and do the things that it took them to get where they're at? No, but yet we'll talk about them, we'll gossip about them. So don't talk about me and don't gossip about me. I've gone through a lot. I don't need to answer to no one, and neither do you. The only one you and I need to answer to is the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? We're imperfect. The only one that's perfect is Jesus, all right? We're going to make mistakes. We're human. You're human. You're going to make mistakes. Your brother's going to make mistakes. Your mother, your father, your husband, your wife. Forgive. Stop harboring bitterness. Learn to forgive and walk in love. Lord, teach us to walk in love. Teach us to forgive, Lord, to walk in your ways, Lord, that are pleasing in your sight, in Jesus' name. All right, so everything I said will not be just handed to you. You will have to pray, seek, knock, and yes, even wait. The church has not learned to wait upon me for anything. They want instant gratification. I heard God say that, instant gratification. I looked up the word instant gratification. It means immediate satisfaction, the quick attainability of happiness or contentness. See, they want to be content. They want it all now. They don't want to wait. Those who seek instant gratification have a present focus. They are less able to control impulses, I was reading, and it says, and are more susceptible to temptation and possibly addiction. And that is why I'm constantly talking about dying to your flesh. We've got to die, saints, all of us do. Die to our flesh that Jesus spoke about. When you are dead to your flesh, you are not quick to be led by your impulses temptations and addictions no you can resist the evil one and he has to flee that's what the bible says children i said you must learn to wait upon me god talks about patience and waiting throughout the scriptures be not in a hurry and wait upon me says the lord your, your trials are producing patience in your character remember james 1 to 8 says Profiting from trials. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Verse 4 But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Verse 5 If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Verse 6, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Verse 7, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. James 5, 7, 8, be patient and persevering. Lord, help us to be patient. Therefore, be patient, it says, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and later rain. Verse 8, you also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. See, God's talking to us about being patient. So we need to walk in patience. Patience is a character trait. What are the character traits God wants to instill in us? We've read this before, Galatians 5, 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such thing, against such there is no law. Verse 24, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us not walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Being patient is not easy. We live in a microwave generation that screams out, we want it now. And that's so true. We don't want to wait. That's why we have these microwaves. All right? You and I don't want to wait. There are many scriptures in the Bible I've read before about waiting. And here's a few of them. Psalm 130, 5, 6. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. Psalm 27, 13 to 14. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Psalms 37 through 34. I love the Psalms. 
Wait for the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land you will look on when the wicked are cut off. All right. Isaiah, let's say, uh, 30, 18. Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is the God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. You know, that's why, if you notice, God takes his time. He does praise and praise, but he doesn't show you and I everything. What does it say? He did um, One day is like a thousand years. I mean, so one day is a thousand years. So if he made the world, what, six, seven days, we're talking six, seven thousand years. I mean, come on. God is very slow. He's not in a hurry. Lamentations 325. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Micah 7, 7, but as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. See, God will answer. He may not answer in your time table or mine. He answers on his own, so we have to be patient. All right, Psalm 37, 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Then the Lord said this to me, in my presence you will find fullness of joy. I, King Jesus, am your joy. The world is not your joy. I am not part of the world. You, my children, must come out of the world and touch no unclean thing, and I'll receive you as my own. I've read these scriptures before, and I keep reading them because this is what God keeps giving me. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world. It says it in the Bible. I didn't say it. Don't get mad at me. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. See, it's right there. See, if you're in love with the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. And the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So, Father, I ask you to crucify our flesh more and more that we do not love the things of this world. Second Corinthians 6, 14, 18 says, warning against adultery. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. That's what it says. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? And think about it. Why are we trying to fit in with the world? Okay, because we're wanting to be accepted. The world is not going to accept you and I. They didn't accept Jesus. They're not going to like you. They're not going to like me. They're going to persecute us. All right, so we've got to stop trying to fit in with the world. We've got to stand up. We've got to speak boldly whether the world wants to hear it or not. I, I'm getting better. I'm not there yet. I get people all the time on YouTube. They're cussing at me, calling me names. But you know what? I'm not going to argue with them. I'm just going to love them, pray for them, you know, they're, and they're blinded. They're blinded and they don't see, all right? And they think I'm a doom, a, a, what do we call it? Uh, we're always speaking gloom and doom. No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you, all right? I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. I know people don't want to hear it. They want to hear what tickles their ears. So that's why I would say when I get ready to speak, if you don't want to hear the truth, don't come and listen to me, all right? Don't come there with your cameras and take it. I'm not interested in that. I'm there to glorify Jesus. All glory and honor goes to Jesus. All right? It says, or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Verse 16, what agreement is there between the temple of God and the idol? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Verse 17, therefore come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. See, it says it right there, it wasn't me. Therefore come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. See, it's the Lord that's saying this. I'm just giving you what God's word says. Touch no unclean thing and I'll receive you. Verse 18, and I'll be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And then I ended with this and this is what God gave me. Children, I love you. I'm preparing you for my homecoming. Will you be ready? I, King Jesus, will return at an hour you do not expect. Look up, says the Lord. Your redemption draws nigh. For the Lord has spoken. And that was what...
God gave me. I wasn't planning on it. But all of a sudden, he gave me that word. I didn't know where I heard him speak it to me. And then I, he just started filling me with all this. And I wrote it down. And I shared it with you. So um, get ready, saints. We're about to see something. I really truly with that. I keep saying that. I just can't believe we're almost in 2019. Are we going to see some of the end of this year or the beginning of next year? We've talked about the meteorites, the fireballs, the near-Earth objects, revelation about there, there's going to be an asteroid encounter, all right? And the Earth, there's going to be a major earthquake. You know, are we going to see that right now? I don't know. I do not know. I'm telling you. What God has been showing me all along with all these prophetic words, you can go on our YouTube website and subscribe if you're not. And also on the front there is another website that just has prophetic words that I've shared, another website. All right? And that's all I'm going to say. Today is, like I said, the weekend. And then um, we're going we're gonna to go into next week and have uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas. Um, I don't know if something's going to come before or um, before the new year. I don't know. We just got to keep our eyes on the Lord. I know there's others that have talked about we're going to see an earthquake soon on the West Coast. We've seen some bigger ones over in Russia and Japan in the sevens. I mean, could we see some on the West Coast with all those small swarms? I mean, they keep getting a lot of twos and, uh, and ones. I mean, so it's building pressure up into something bigger. I truly believe that. I've given you other prophetic words from others. That God has shown them what's coming. So you can go on the website. You can listen to me speak. You can read what others have said as well. And you can pray and decide for yourself. But keep your focus on the Lord. And maybe I'm talking today and you don't know Christ today. You've never given him your heart and life. You, this is all new for you. You're listening to me. You hear the news. You're seeing what's going on. You know, a lot of the news is fake news. They don't want to tell you what. The actual news is okay. You've got to um, let's read the drudge has it. Fox News is getting more and more away from the truth. My husband has said so. The drudge, Breitbart, um, you've got to pray, you've got to seek God, and He will um, give you wisdom. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher, it says that in the Bible. So the Holy Spirit will give you an eye wisdom and sermon. We've got to make sure that what we're listening lines up with the Word of God. Okay, because there's a lot of speaking going on right now. You know, remember it talks about if the, people said the Christ is over here, over there, don't go over, see them. So we've got to make sure that what we're listening to lines up with the Word of God. So we pray that right now. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for what you're about to do, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We're not afraid. We're not worried, Lord. We know that you're in control, Lord, of everything, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. We thank you for what you're about to do, Lord. I ask you to open doors for those that are waiting for you, Lord. And, um, Lord, I pray for those that don't even know you. Maybe you're listening. We didn't pray yet. Just call me today. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me. I want to know you today, Lord. So I ask you to save me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you said that prayer, go and share that good news with someone. But I pray for all of us that God will watch over each and every one of us as we get ready to head out the door wherever we go. It's so important, saints, that we be careful and we be mindful and have, be alert of what, what the, our, our, our setting around us, what's around us, where we're headed. So I ask you to watch over all of us, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around us. Keep us safe, Lord. Keep us under the shadow of your wings, Lord. We pray for Israel, Lord. Protect Israel. Watch over Israel, Lord. May we not be uh, in the middle of trying to separate them with the Palestinians, Lord. We pray for our president. We lift up our Trump administration, Lord. We pray that they would have an encounter with you, Lord Jesus. And we pray that America would turn its eyes back to you, Lord, that we'd humble ourselves and pray and that we'd seek you and cry out to you, God, for we need you in America, Lord. We don't need anything else, Lord, but we need you, Lord. So I ask, Lord, that you will touch our nation with a mighty revival and that more of us, Lord, would take up our cross and that we'd follow you, Lord, and commit and to obey you and do what you're asking us to do, Father. Because the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few, and you need more of us to get in line with what you're getting ready to do, Lord. 
So I pray that right now. So, Lord, I ask you to meet the needs of your people, Lord. Maybe there are those that are feeling lonely. Or maybe right now there are those hurting with all the with the Christmas holiday coming up, Lord. They feel like they're all alone. They're by themselves, Lord. Maybe they lost a loved one or they're separated or divorced from their husband or wife, Lord. Whatever it is, Lord, today, I ask you to comfort their hearts, Lord. If they have lost loved ones, be with them, Lord. Um, I know Dang and I don't have a lot of family, Lord, but you're our family. You're our are, you're everything, Lord. Without you, we're nothing, Lord. You're you're my father, mother, sister, brother. You're everything, Lord. So I ask you to be everything to your people today. May they feel your presence. May they feel your anointing. Maybe for those that are sick in body, Lord, and they need you to touch them, Lord, and heal them, Lord. Lord, they've got pain, Lord, that only you can heal. Maybe the doctors have given them no hope, Lord. Father, you can do anything. I speak healing over them right now. In Jesus' name, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, be healed in the name of Jesus. Just receive your healing by faith. God can do anything. Do not doubt God. Believe and have faith. Today is your day. I believe that God is about to do mighty miracles in these last days. We're about to see the power of God move like we've never seen before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you're getting ready to do. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Please keep our minister in prayer. Keep us in prayer. That we, we all keep in prayer, that we all pray for one another, pray for our brothers and sisters, that we stay strong in Jesus. All right, I want you to know we love you and we appreciate you. And if you can help out our ministry, please do. And um, just keep your focus on the Lord. All right, because um, things are about to change. I'm going to tell you right now be alert, keep your eyes open. And um, like I said, I can't be on here all the time. So you've got to make sure you're reading, praying, and seeking the Lord because as times go on, get they go on they get quicker i'm not gonna be able to do everything myself i'm gonna need more help you know but god gives us grace and strength for that right appointed moment and i know in time he'll give us more help when the time is needed so if i don't write you all back or i don't get back with you please know it's not not that i want to it's just me doing everything daniel helps in the back of the scenes so i want you to, we love you we appreciate you and um if i don't come on here have a blessed uh, Merry Christmas, be safe, whatever you're doing, uh, and um, I, I plan on coming back, <laughs> I guess I'll be back here, I don't know where I'm going to be, Tommy, I'll ask you, I never know, I never know what God's going to do from day to day, and you know, God keeps me on my toes, he'll keep you on your toes, all right, until we meet again, this is Prophet.